The bulk insert task, as we talked about in the last video, is how you will take data that's stored in a text file and load it up into SQL Server tables. Now I've got a quick example. Some people may not be familiar with what I'm talking about. What I mean when I say you've got data in a text file, this is something like it might be. So you're given a table. You can see the column headers up in the top. The, this is a CSV file, a comma separated values file, CSV, uh, just in case you, oops, wrong key combination, just in case you can't understand, comma separated values. So a CSV file separates things with a comma, right? So here you can see that the department ID column is first, so one, two, three, four, the name is next, engineering, tool design, sales, marketing, etc. So in effect, each one of these is a row. Here's a row. Here's another row. Here's another row. The row is delimited by the fact that it's on a new line. Okay? What we call a CRLF, control line feed, if you haven't seen that before. So the columns are delimited by a comma, and the rows are delimited with a new line. OK, so you got it. What we're going to do is we're going to take this particular text file, and we're going to load it up into a SQL Server table. So we've got a SQL Server table that has these columns, and we want to load this data and store it up in here. Okay, so when I say you're taking data out of a text file, that's what I mean. You have a whole bunch of rows in the database, and you want to load them up into SQL Server. Now, certain things may look odd. Like you may notice right here that that seems to be very uh, not normal. Well, guess what? I have Word Wrap turned on. So when I take that off, you can see, sure enough, it does go beyond the part there. And so there really are individual lines here. So there's 16 rows in this text file that we want to load into SQL Server. Now we're given a series of choices. We really have three techniques for loading text files into SQL Server. So I'm going to go back into integration services. I've got the Visual Studio open. I'm going to make a new package. And let's just make an annotation here. Uh, three techniques. Oh gosh, I guess there's four if you include .NET, but I'm not. For loading text file data, text file into SQL Server tables. And let's go ahead and set our font a little large enough to where the world can enjoy the beauty of my typing. One, data flow task. Pros of the data flow task are easy to configure and it's very fast. Okay. Um, the cons, um, not many. <laughs> uh, one other pro up here is this is the most configurable, uh, meaning that I can do transformations along the way. Um, the data flow cons, not really many cons to this, perhaps not as fast as the bulk insert. So then we get the bulk insert task. And so the pros on this one would be very fast, um, very fast, <laughs> lightweight, not as much overhead. Uh, however, the cons on this one are it's a pain in the you-know-what uh, to configure and maintain, uh, and no transforms. So you're basically given a text file. You're loading it up. You're not going to look at the value. Hey, it's United States. I want to change that to USA. Or you're not taking three columns, like first name, middle initial, and last name, and truncating them down to a single column in the destination. No, 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 no. Not going to do any transformations. The third option here is probably the one that's least familiar to people. It is using the execute SQL task and using transact SQL to actually do the bulk load 
from directly within Transact SQL. So the cons here, uh, sorry, the pros are uh, actually fairly easy to do, uh, very fast. Um, uh, it's, it is SQL, so if you know SQL, you, you know how to do that. So it's fairly easy to get started with that. The cons, though, is, again, it's kind of a pain and no transforms. So those are the three techniques that we have for loading text files into a SQL Server table. Let's take a look in this video at number two here, the bulk insert task. Later on in the course, we'll talk about using the execute SQL task. Uh, and in about three or four videos from now, then we're going to talk about the data flow task. Okay, so let's do the bulk insert. And you're quickly going to understand why there are these cons with it. But it's a great task. Don't let me dissuade you. Uh, okay, so uh, let's do... Let's create ourselves a text file. I'm going to include all of this with the video. Uh, so I'm going to make a file and I'm going to name it, uh, let's see, this file, this, I'll call it data2. So data02.text. So it's included in this video, it's in the zip file. Uh, so we'll do this, we'll make a single column. So uh, this could be something like uh, product ID, and you know you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. Okay. I'm just going to make it single column. I have a reason for doing that, and I save it. I, and that's really it. You've got a single column. You've got seven rows. We want to load it up. Okay. I'm going to go back into Integration Services. Oh man, I can't stand that. And I'm going to change that to smaller. You've read it. I'm just keeping it here in the task. Now I'm going to do this in two parts here. So part one or step part step one is create or replace table. So we're going to hook up to a SQL server. So let me go ahead and make a connection to remember when you're doing SQL server, use your OLADB. So I'll make a new connection. I say new and I'm going to connect to just my local server using the native client, use the learnitfirst.com database. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a table to store that information. Okay, so I have two choices for this. I have three. Um, I could do it in a variable. We're talking about those in chapter five. So I'm going to talk about file connection and direct input. File connection works for me in this case. So let me launch my management studio. I like to do my writing of SQL code here in a full-blown editing environment. So I want to use the learnitfirst.com database. I'm hitting tab for it to automatically complete, by the way. And I want to say that, well, let's do this. Create table, dbo.product, and we'll just give it one column. Okay. So I'm going to execute the I actually I'm going to save this onto the C drive and we'll just give it the same name we did the other miss uh, I'm sorry uh, what is it data 02.sql and just to show and make sure it runs I can parse it over here uh, but I can run it too and make sure that it executes. And that gives me that warm fuzzy feeling of knowing there's the product table. It was successful. Now the only negative, the only problem that I'm going to have is if I run this script again, it's going to try to re it's going to try to create the table again. Unfortunately, we don't have syntax like you might in Oracle uh, MySQL, which is the create or replace syntax. So that syntax is awesome. I've wished for that for five versions of SQL Server now, but we don't get it. So I'm going to make mine repeatable, and it's going to say if exists. Drop the table. 
Now this is not great code. This does not ensure that this table is in the right schema, but it, it's a good enough for explaining how this works. Basically it says, is there a table in the database named product? If there is, if a row comes back from running this inner query, which it does, then drop the table. Then the next step is going to be to replace the table or to create the table. So I can repeatedly run this without getting an error. And we can see that it's been run, just in case you don't believe me, because I can insert the product values 1 and then look in the product. So you see it did actually add that row to the database. But as soon as I run this part of the code again, not the insert, so I'm going to take the insert out now, you can see that it did drop the table and recreate it. So let me save this. And I'm going to take out the select statement. Okay. Now, is this the type of SQL command that returns a result set? No, it just performs an action. So I'm going to come back over here to my execute SQL task. It does not return a result set. And so I'm going to say it's a file. So my, I make a new file connection. If I seem like I'm going a little bit fast, it's because we just got through two videos ago covering this whole thing with the execute SQL task. So it might behoove you to go back and watch those if you think I'm going a little bit fast. Uh, I really don't have anything else to do that's going to create or replace the table if it exists. And this, the next thing to do is grab my bulk insert task and just say when that occurs, when that is successful, let's go to perform the bulk insert. Now let's talk about the bulk insert. Let's uh, we get one of these junk general pages. So let's take a look at the connection. So the connection here, you're defining your destination. What kind of a destination are we working with here? Do you remember from the last video? SQL Server, right? So we're loading this text file into a SQL Server database. Okay, so the destination here is our SQL Server. And our source, you can see it right there, is a file. So we're going to load that up through a file. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab these. So i tell you what I'll do is I will connect my source first. So let me make a new connection. It automatically picks up that we already have that one file-based connection. But that's not our source data. So I'm going to make a new connection to data02, my text file. Okay, so there's my source file now. I've defined where the source data comes from. 